I still can't recall the last time I saw a real bear market bottom where bullishness came back this fast as it has in crypto. And that's concerning to me. I, you know, they always say you got to flush out the weak hands. And, and I don't really believe that crypto really ever flushed out the weak hands when it was down in the 15, seven ish range. So, so that's a concern to me. I also think that, you know, if you look at interest rates where they are, the Fed has just said in their last meeting, hey, we're leaving them here. We may not hike them more, which I don't think they will do much, but we're not going to lower them for a significant amount of time. That's going to be very hard for a risk asset like Bitcoin to deal with. And then you also have a scenario where, where you're going to get the stock market, in my opinion, to realize we're going into a recession. It's got to price that in, which probably means 20, 25% downside in the S&P. How does Bitcoin react to that? Gareth Soloway, a seasoned trader and investor with over two decades of experience, recently shared his insights on the current state of the cryptocurrency and stock markets. Soloway is optimistic about the prospects of Bitcoin and sees its recent breakthrough of the $30,000 level as a positive sign, indicating potential for further gains. According to Soloway, this breakthrough represents a shift in market sentiment, with buyers now in control and demand for the cryptocurrency increasing. Currently, attention is focused on the resistance at $28,500, a key breakout target in the past and an area that has previously acted as strong support. Soloway believes that breaking through this level will require a strong push from the bulls to continue the upward trend. According to Soloway, we are about a year and a half into this bear market. This stagnation implies perhaps a year and a half of stagnation before Bitcoin shoots up to the moon again. While he sees the $30,000 level as a potential sign of strength, he also acknowledges the possibility of it being a top or a bubble waiting to burst. Soloway believes that the rapid rise in Bitcoin's value is not sustainable and that the market is overdue for a correction or even a crash. Gareth Soloway believes that I think we're seeing these flashes of what Bitcoin can be this amazing asset that is a protection asset against other issues in the global sphere, but it's not quite there yet. Before proceeding further in this video, make sure to click on the subscribe button below to stay updated with our latest content. So what we're seeing here on Bitcoin is uh, number one, just recent, let me go to my 10 minute chart because this is a pretty recent sell off just in the last hour or so. And we can see it all of a sudden starting to dump to the downside here. And if we go back to your daily chart, one of the things I'm watching here is that if you look at the lows of this consolidation pattern, right? Look at this, right? If we just draw a trend line right across here, you essentially are right at that area. So in the short term, this 26,700 level, very, very important. If this breaks, then you're headed to this level, which is at 25,000. So, so you are at a very pivotal point. A lot of people have been speculating in the crypto markets that we're just about to this big breakout. I'm not a speculator, right? And I think that's when, when we say that word, I'm speculating it's going to break out. But in reality, a good trader doesn't speculate. We go with probabilities, right? It's probability driven. And so for me, I shorted a little Bitcoin right up here because again, on a psychological basis, this was the cycle midpoint of the bull cycle, right? We talked about this even just a week ago or so when we had our last chat, Greg, this was going to be resistance. And then you could see it working here. And so price is going to struggle right there. And so for me, it's it's until it's broken, it's resistance. That's just what it is. Uh, my heart might say, oh, I really hope it breaks out. My, my gut may say it. But in all honesty, they mean nothing compared to what the charts are really telling us. And so for me, it's it's short Bitcoin until it breaks above this area, in which case I would just cover and take a small loss. But ultimately, probabilities tell us it should head lower. Now, listen, on a technical basis, if we were to establish ourselves above 30,000 here um, and hold there for a week, then you might convince me that the lows are in. But as of now, we're not above there. So I'm still in the camp that there's still a bear market here. We might go lower. It's it's the one thing I do know is is the next six to twelve months are going to be very very interesting and and it's going to be scary at some points but remember and I always say this to people is that scary means opportunity too right and so you have to just this is why it's good to have a little cash on the sidelines is you just never know when the great deal is going to come up. Gareth Soloway has argued that many banks have become too big and too powerful, which has led to increased risk in the financial system. Despite recent turbulence in the banking sector, the Federal Reserve has played down its impact and remains committed to achieving its 2% inflation target through monetary policy. Moreover, Soloway has also highlighted the issue of high levels of debt on the balance sheets of several banks, which he deems to be a worrying trend. As a result, investors should remain vigilant and carefully evaluate their investments in the banking sector. In his tweet, Gareth Soloway highlighted that with the Federal Reserve hiking by 25 basis point and saying they won't lower rates this year into next, with a recession talk which I have slated to hit in the second half of 2023. 
The recent surge in prices may have weakened the support for an additional rally, despite indications that the Federal Reserve may be close to reaching its peak interest rate and the potential for further depreciation of the U.S. dollar. While the U.S. Central Bank has made slight adjustments to other economic forecasts, it still projects slightly weaker growth for the year ahead. Yeah, and, and I think that's amazing to see the disparity where the market is like being like, no, we will not accept what the Federal Reserve is saying. Part of that, honestly, is a loss of confidence in the Fed, right? I mean, the Fed has said this before, and then they've pivoted very quickly. The only thing I would like to point out about that is that in the past, when they've kind of changed their mind, like 2018, great example, they were hiking rates, market dropped by 20% in something like six weeks, and then they reversed and actually started cutting rates. But that was a different time because inflation was 2% or under. And that's the kicker here is that how much pain is the Fed going to let the economy have as long as inflation's above that 2%? Um, I do think there's a pivot point. I just don't think we're going to get to that point yet this year where the Fed is willing to cut. So the banks, I mean, the banks have tapped the the window of the, at the Fed for uh, billions and billions of dollars. We've seen the balance sheet of the Fed soar again. Um, again, a lot of that's to protect the banks in the near term. But but um, but the Fed will make sure, in my opinion, the Fed's not going to let inflation go up. And, and part of this is a mentality of the Fed, right? So the Fed realizes, and I think politically this has been pushed on them as well, which is, which is rightly done, is that inflation hurts middle income and lower income when you have you know free money a lot of the rich get richer right so so the question is is which one is your greater evil and and when you're talking about middle and lower income then it's obviously inflation is the greater evil than a market decline of 20 or 30 percent and in fact what's interesting is that these crises at banks are actually going to tighten liquidity in terms of a lot of these banks are not going to be free lending money very easily that are in stressful situations right now so in a weird way it's actually helping the fed tighten with the crisis that's going on Soloway predicts that the stock market is headed for a recession due to the current financial turmoil. The recession will lead to decreased spending and earnings per share for stocks, resulting in a substantial decline in valuations in the next 12 months. While the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates by a quarter percentage point, it remains cautious about the recent banking crisis and suggests that future hikes may be nearing an end. Soloway believes that if the S&P 500 experiences a decline towards the end of the year, Bitcoin could also be impacted by this selling pressure. And why this market to me is scary. And I've said this before, how we may not hit new highs for 10 to 15 years. And people, you know, it's it's all the, the young people that haven't experienced like the dot-com collapse are like, oh, that's that's impossible. Like you're insane. But if you go to your larger time frame, right? Like if you go to your monthly chart and you go back to the the previous bubbles, right? And again, here's your here's your dot-com run up your pullback, your 2007 run up with which was the financial before the financial crisis. That was the bull market there. And then look at what we've just come out of. And let me remove these lines. But That's I mean, like, like this is this was like a big wave. This is like a tidal wave. I mean, and like I look at that and I'm like, dude, that scares the crap out of me when I see like the amount of upside that was driven by quantitative easing and these printing of money. And, and it makes me aware of how bad. I mean, people to me don't have any concept of if we really got in the crap, you know, if, if it really hit the fan, what and what could end up happening? I mean, I've I've even speculated that if we got a, the ultimate reset, this we've never retraced to the highs of those this double top. So charts generally they like to break out and then they like to retrace and then they like to go higher. We never retraced because the market never got that chance because it print there was so much money printed. So in my head I'm like, "Oh my gosh, we're, and again, this is worst case scenario, but is it possible that we could ever go back to that level? I don't know. Dare thinks that in the short term, the fear the banks caused influenced investors to buy Bitcoin as a safety play. Gareth Soloway remains bullish on Bitcoin, recognizing its potential as a crucial asset in the current market. While acknowledging the potential for mode rate inflation, Soloway believes is unlikely to reach levels seen in previous years. On this note, we conclude today's video. Do you agree with Gareth Soloway's perspective about financial crash in the market and Bitcoin performance? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this information helpful, then like this video and subscribe to our channel. We will bring you more updates in the future.